Peace Deep Minds 255 here. Today's video is going to be about Final Fantasy XIV last pre-end walker letter from the producer. This is going to be live on November 5th at 7 p.m. Pacific uh, Daytime. Or if you're on the East Coast, it's going to be 10 p.m. Or in other words, this Friday, November 5th at 10 p.m. This article is by Andre Sharon, so I'll be reading some things from there and giving a lot of my own viewpoints about and Walker and Final Fantasy XIV. It's been quite the journey with this game, but we'll talk about more of that later. Let's get into the article. This is going to be Yoshida's 67th live letter stream, where he typically spends an hour or more discussing the changes coming to Final Fantasy XIV in smaller patches or big expansions. Now this next live stream coming up on the 5th, which is again this Friday, November 5th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this next live letter will once again be available to stream via Final Fantasy XIV's official Twitch channel and Japanese to English interpretation will be included. And Walker, for those who want to know, is going to be out on November 19th for those who pre-ordered Final Fantasy XIV's next expansion. If you're bypassing the initial weekend player flood, and Walker is going to be live on November 23rd. Yoshida has already noted on several occasions that version 6.0 is Final Fantasy XIV's biggest update yet, and will close out a story arc that's been going for nearly a decade before beginning something new. I'm really hoping with that. That they've learned their lesson from the first expansion. And we know what that nightmare is. A Realm Reborn. Closing out this story arc is good and bad. And this is really important because if they are closing out the story arc like they're saying, then Shadowbringers is a really high note to close this out on. So this has to s outdo this or be better or at least equal to it. Otherwise, I have to be honest with you, I'm going to be done with the series. Final Fantasy XIV is like jumping out of a plane with a parachute that only works 50% of the time. And I don't think I have to explain the problem with that. Stormblood was okay. It was still better than A Realm Reborn. But that's only because of the villain. Heaven's Word, no complaints, no problem. A Realm Reborn and Stormblood absolutely drained my soul. And then Shadowbringers brought it back up. And me and Hoshi talked about this at length. Is Shadowbringers one of the greatest Final Fantasy stories to ever be written? It might be, but, but after going through A Realm Reborn, Heavenward, and Stormblood, just about any decent storyline can come and make that better. <laughs> so, I don't know, but I do know this. I'm probably not the only person who feels like if this last expansion to close out this story isn't great, a lot of people are permanently walking away from this game or they may not come back again for a long time. Either way, they know this has to be big. And Yoshida reportedly said that this end walker expansion. It's the biggest expansion yet. You remember how big Stormblood was? He said that this expansion is not supposed to be Shadowbringers 2. That is not exactly great news. <laughs> That's not something to be proud of. Shadowbringers is the best part of Final Fantasy 14. Emek and Xenos, right? Those two villains, they, they are they were, are what makes it so great. I think they're very brave to kill Emek, and the thought of bringing him back now? I hope they don't do that, because then that loses some of his character, but they, Square Enix, one of my problems with Final Fantasy XIV 
is that they keep killing off good villains, and they don't have that many good villains to begin with. <laughs> so, Ed Walker's got a really spectacular job to do. There's a whole lot of other things that need some discussing, and maybe after the live letter, some of those things can be discussed as well on Friday. I have to be quite honest, the only reason why I even gave, and I'm giving in Walker or Final Fantasy XIV one last try, and I'm stating this now, so I'm gonna buy it, but the main reason, or only two reasons why I got into this game, number one, the first reason was because of the legacy of Square Enix and all of the great memories and great games that I have played from Squaresoft slash Square Enix. Number two, it was really what finally got me to play Final Fantasy XIV was the Night Sky Prince. If you're listening to this, you probably heard of him. He's a great YouTuber. Go check out his channel if you haven't compared it to the Final Fantasy storyline. I said it was that great or comparable. And I was like, ah, this is Cap. And it was Cap. <laughs> the only thing that remotely came close to it, Shadowbringers. And um, to be honest, uh, even that took some elements of Final Fantasy VII. And that city reminded me, I don't know about you, of the City of Ancients from Final Fantasy VII. Then again, that whole subject deserves another video in and of itself. Square Enix's MMO has seen a flood of good news lately with its latest popularity surge. Yoshida noted in Final Fantasy XIV's recent media tower that it shouldn't give up hope just yet for a version to play on Microsoft consoles. Anyway, I hope you're excited. I hope you enjoyed the, the uh, stream. And hopefully we can talk about it some more. This is DeepMind255 out. One.